Welcome to Hong Kong, home to a modest 7.3 million people living in just 25% of the land area. This is one of the most intense areas of urbanization in the world. Yet with over 75% of undeveloped mountainous land, Hong Kong has dedicated an impressive amount of space to National Park, offering homes to a wealth of endangered and endemic wildlife. But it's not all that simple, and I'll be exploring the wild side of Hong Kong and the complex relationship it has with its wildlife. I'm Sophie Pavel, and in this video I'm going to find out how wild Hong Kong really is. When you think of Hong Kong, you think of smog, you think of people, you think of high-rise buildings. The last thing you're going to think about is lush mountains, black kites soaring above, lizards on the side of the trail, warm sunshine, clear blue skies. This is Lantau and it is a national park and it is one of Hong Kong's main biodiversity hotspots. Special species like the Chinese white dolphin, the black kite, the most common bird of prey in the world, wingspan 1.5 meters, equally at home in the city, up here in the mountains. So with black kites ticked off my list, it was time to head to another national park to find a bit more about rocks. The Geopark at Sai Kung is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and for a very good reason the world away from the hustle and bustle. The site is used as a tool to encourage people to get out of the smog-filled city and into the wild. People who come up here on the weekend seem to completely revel in its beauty and I think there's a growing regard for the importance of getting outside, out of the city. The air is so much fresher here. I mean, it's just it's absolutely amazing. While it's hard to imagine that Hong Kong has been anything but a bustling metropolis, the Geopark is a living testament to its dramatic geological past. Heading back into the city, I was keen to find out more about urban tree sparrows. For many locals, these sparrows represent their only wildlife interaction in the city, despite the fact that Hong Kong holds one third of China's bird species. After a brief encounter with flamingos and redded terrapins in a local park, it was time to once again venture into the mountains, which offered a striking insight into another more concerning wildlife interaction. We've just come to a place called Kam Shan Country Park, also known as Monkey Mountain or Monkey Hill by Hong Kong. And it holds 1,800 of the wild monkeys here in Hong Kong out of a possible 2,300. As you can see behind me here, it is swarming with long-tailed and rhesus macaques, both of which are old wild monkeys. Oh, oh, don't look at me. I keep making eye contact by accident. It seems this illegal baiting behaviour has worsened in the last few years and I chatted to Anna, our Cantonese translator, to find out how she feels about the situation. When I was small my father uh, would bring me here to see the monkeys because it's nature but um, at that time less people would bring the food to feed the monkeys so the monkeys are able to find the food by themselves but now when I come after like 10 some more years I see so many rubbish and plastic here I feel not good and I see some of the baby monkeys are actually eating the plastic it's really bad a baby macaque has just been eating a plastic bag it is worrying it's really worrying <laughs> The macaques have developed a really opportunistic omnivorous diet, making the most of being fed things like bread and man-made stuff, which is obviously going to be really bad for their digestive system. Over time, these monkeys have lost or really reduced their sense of fear towards humans, when actually I would argue that they should fear us even more, because look what we're doing to their environment. We're giving them a plastic playground, we're tempting them out of their natural habitat, their natural environment. Who knows what this is doing to their troop behaviour and their family relationships and things like that, their life expectancy, their physiology, if they're eating plastic. It is a stark, stark reminder of what happens when we interfere with wildlife. As a zoologist, it is so interesting, but it is so confusing. I feel so conflicted. 
Um, you know, it's wonderful to have this encounter and be so intimate with the monkeys, but then I would much rather be out there in the forest searching for them, tracking them, rather than them coming to us. We should, you know, anyway. Oh, hello. Oh, they are just so cute. They're so cheeky and naughty. It's so hard to see something so, that was not so wild and beautiful um, be used as a tourist attraction, but the encounter is really wonderful. Despite its apparent disconnect with its wildlife, I couldn't help but feel really impressed and encouraged by the attitudes of many local people in Hong Kong that hope to protect and conserve its wild spaces for years to come.